They have come from all over the Southwest to Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas. They have come for Wrestling Star Wars 81, the second edition. It is Reunion Arena. It is the scene tonight of probably one of the most wild and potentially historical matches in the history of this great sport. It is Kabuki. It is Bruiser Brody. It is Star Wars Wrestling Star Wars 81, the second edition. And here's Bill Mercer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the main event, Texas Death Match. To my right, or to my left, weighing at 240 pounds from Singapore, the great Kabuki. And to my right, weighing in at 300 pounds from Santa Fe, New Mexico, Bruiser Brody. As you know, this is a Texas death match. And the only way a man can win is to leave his opponent unable to leave this ring. The winner must leave his opponent out in the ring, go through the cage, and he will be the winner. A stipulation, if Bruiser Brody is the winner, then Fritz Von Erich will meet Gary Hart in the cage, Gary in his tuxedo. That's if Bruiser Brody wins. The referee is David Manning. The gatekeeper is Bronco Lubitsch. And this is the Texas Death Match. No time limit. And there you have it as spelled out by Bill Mercer. A Texas death match. And where better to have a match like that than in the capital of professional wrestling, Dallas, Texas, Reunion Arena. Outside the ring, you see just coming up, you see Fritz Von Erich. And look at Gary Hart. Gary Hart certainly has a great vested interest in this match. If Kabuki loses this match, Gary Hart will then face Fritz Von Erich immediately following inside this cage. Bruiser Brody, and he is not concerned about any of that. Coach of the Texas Wrangler football team, Walter Johnson, 12 years and all pro with the Cleveland Browns, is in the back. If Bruiser Brody wins, then Walter Johnson will be sure that Gary Hart goes into the cage ring. And there is the bell, and we are underway. It is Bruiser Brody, Kabuki, in a Texas death match. The rules of this match clearly spell out. The winner must be able to render his opponent helpless and walk out of the door of the cage under his own power. And of course, if Brody wins, Fritz Von Erich, as we said, gets Gary Hart inside the cage immediately following. Gary Hart, you see him dressed in his tuxedo outside of the cage, watching his kabuki dressed for the first time that I can remember in the white. Usually he wears the black. No matter what color Kabuki wears, he is certainly a sinister figure. Kabuki from Singapore, you know the story of Kabuki, at least the story we are told. Gary Hart somehow managed to bring this man into the country, and since he has come into the country, he has made a name for himself that's not only become one of the most controversial names in professional wrestling in the United States, but certainly all over the world. Bruiser Brody. Everything has been said about Bruiser Brody, and he backs up everything that has been said. You see Kabuki, the smaller of the two, but possibly the more dangerous of the two. Gary Hart watching intently. He certainly, as we said, has an interest in this. You also see the striped-shirted figure of Bronco Lubitsch outside the ring. And what you cannot see is the huge, huge crowd here at Reunion Arena. And this is one of the great matches that they've been waiting for on a, on a card that has been overflowing with great matches this evening. Into the corner they go, Kabuki with a handful of hair. David Manning, the referee, an unenviable position. A referee in a Texas death match. Well, I really don't know what his job is because the winner is the only man who can walk out of the ring. There will probably be no arms raised in this match as Kabuki's head now thrown into the turnbuckle. Gary Hart stroking his own bald head. Outside, not at all pleased with what he's seeing right now. And Kabuki lifted up like a 10-pound bag of potatoes and thrown down onto the floor. 
And you see Brody. He's checking out the cage door because that's where he plans to go. But he misses that big body splash down as Kabuki with enough sense to roll out of the way. What a great, great night here at Reunion Arena. Wrestling Star Wars 81, the second edition. And there you see Fritz Von Erich in front of the ring walking around as he anticipates a chance to get in there with Gary Hart. Now in the corner, it is Kabuki as he has Bruiser Brody wrapped up in the corner. And I don't know if Kabuki was biting Brody or, or what. Bruiser Brody, a history with Kabuki, a history that involves some terrible moments in Bruiser's life. And every one of those moments, I'm sure, is being recalled at this moment. Is now Kabuki literally has Brody on the ropes. Gary Hart outside, putting his coat back on. And now that pressure hold by Kabuki in the very, very sensitive armpit area. You see Brody shaking his arm, trying to keep the circulation, the nerves from, from going numb. David Manning, the third man in the ring. And now Kabuki, probably like the rest of the folks here at Reunion, wondering where Brody gets this extra power, but somewhere he reaches down and picks it up and comes up with a big smash to the face of Kabuki. And Kabuki, Kabuki got that foot up about six and a half feet. Kabuki, obviously the much smaller man, but those feet, those hands, everything about Kabuki, extremely dangerous. And Brody, another kick to the head. That one did not land full force, but Brody already weakened, went down. And a judo chop to the top of the head as Kabuki now trying to walk over to the ring to get out. Now, I would not say that Brody is helpless, but if Kabuki can get out, he will be the winner in a Texas death match. And Brody certainly not about to let that happen. Bronco Lubich, the keeper of the gate. He is the one who will open that gate whenever anyone tries to get through it. And talk about big kicks. That one was felt all over the state of Texas. As down goes Kabuki against the ropes. Gary Hart exasperated outside the ring. And another of those huge boots into the chest this time of Kabuki. And Brody strutting around the ring, lining up another one. Three in a row. Five, Five minutes, minutes have gone by, and the amount of... And now you see Brody trying to get outside the ring, but Kabuki comes back with a quick, short kick to the back of the kidney area. And you notice Brody grabbing his midsection. If you have ever received any kind of a blow to the kidney area, you know it goes all the way through you. You see Fritz von Erich out there talking to Gary Hart. Bronco Lubitsch telling Fritz to get away. You don't have a chance at him yet. Your man Kabuki must lose, and that, of course, is far from being the situation. Gary Hart and Fritz almost getting into it now outside the ring as Gary picked up a chair to throw at Fritz, who was over there taunting Hart. Meanwhile, in the ring, you see Kabuki working on the neck and nerve area. Fritz von Erich. And Gary Hart outside the ring, both with a very definite vested interest in the outcome of this match. But let us keep in mind that the real action right now, there you see it, the chop, the gouge. This is not wrestling, this is a brawl. And that is what the fans here have come to see, and that is why there is a cage, because this is a Texas death match. You can go anywhere in the world and people know what a Texas death match is. And of course, this is where it has started. The area for which this kind of a match has been named is Brody going over to the gate, trying to get out. If he gets out, and he's not going to, as a big chop by Kabuki. David Manning signaling that the gate be closed, and now Kabuki crawling up on top. Kabuki coming down with a big kick to the head of Bruiser Brody. And now watch Kabuki as he walks the ropes. Allah the spoiler comes down with a judo chop on the head. And Bruiser Brody, probably now, somewhere in the back of his mind, thinking of all of the punishment that he has suffered at the hands of Kabuki. 
The blood now flowing from the forehead of Bruiser Brody down onto his shoulders. The blood splattering onto the white pants of Kabuki. Kabuki working on that cut. The blood now on the face of Kabuki. The blood all over coming from the forehead of, of Bruiser Brody. And now a quick chop to the throat by Brody. There you see it. You can see the blood on the forehead above the left eye. And Kabuki working on it. Kabuki with that hideous face. The green tongue. You see the blood now on the on the pants of Kabuki as the blood. Oh, this is disgusting. Kabuki. This is the man that Gary Hart is proud of. That says a lot about Gary Hart. And look at the blood all over the chest, all over the face of this giant of a man, Bruiser Brody. And down he goes as Kabuki now going for the cage door, trying to get out. If he does, he is the winner. The cage now being opened. But oh, and a drop kick by Brody. 300 plus pounds behind that. Those huge boots landing in the back of Kabuki. You see Kabuki twisting and turning. He is, he is in great, great pain. And now Brody, Brody with new life. Picks up Kabuki again, twisting him around, throwing him down in the center of the ring here at Reunion Arena. And Brody sensing this could be it. Brody wanting a victory. Fritz von Erich wanting a Bruiser Brody victory, but you can bet that Brody is not giving any thought to what could happen if he wins. If he wins this match, obviously Fritz von Erich, as we have mentioned, will get a chance and Fritz at uh, Fritz's arch enemy, Gary Hart. Gary Hart, not at all pleased with what he's seeing happening right now in the ring. Brody sensing the victory. He doesn't care about Fritz and Gary. He cares about that man right there, Kabuki. Kabuki in great trouble. You can look back just a few moments ago to that huge drop kick to the back of Kabuki. This is the third time he has picked him up. He takes him into the turnbuckle. He didn't get all the, look at the blood on the pants of Kabuki. This great loss of blood has to be weakening this giant, this great man, Bruiser Brody, who now working his way toward the cage. Kabuki tied up in the ropes. Working his way is Brody. He gets there. He is out of the ring. And the winner, the winner is, is Bruiser Brody. Bruiser Brody, the winner of the Texas death match. And we know, we know what that means right now, Brody. Thrilled with this victory. Kabuki in the center of the ring. Gary Hart and Fritz will be entering the ring. And we will be showing you that very soon. Right now from Reunion Arena, this is Steve Hart. And now Bruiser Brody in the corner. I think he senses victory here. Down with a big splash on Kabuki. And Gary Hart outside the ring does not like what he's seeing at all right now. Here's Brody. He picks up Kabuki, takes him into the corner, throws him into the turnbuckle, ties him up there. You see the blood on the pants of Kabuki. That blood from the head of Bruiser Brody. Brody looking at the ring corner where the cage is. Kabuki tied up. Here's Brody. Brody, is he going to make it? Yes, he is. Brody outside the ring. Kabuki helpless. And that means Bruiser Brody is the winner of this Texas death match. An amazing performance by this giant of a man, Bruiser Brody. And that means, of course, that Gary Hart and Chris Von Erich will get into the ring together. And we will show you that soon. I'm Steve Harms here at Reunion Arena. And now, the crowd anticipating what is going to happen as Kabuki is helped out of the ring. Gary Hart, I'm sure his heart's now just pounding. Fritz Von Erich, the same thing as he anticipates inside the cage. As you see, Gary Hart starting to walk down the ring. In the cage. That is Walter Johnson, the huge ex-pro football player, as now Gary Hart. There you hear Bill Mercer telling the crowd here at Reunion exactly what is going to happen, but he doesn't have to do that. Everybody knows, everybody has anticipated this moment. Gary Hart in his lemon-lime tuxedo, looking rather dapper, looking rather terrified. And here comes the man, casually, a very happy, look at the smile on Fritz von Erich's face. 
And now he is inviting David Manning to just leave. Let me alone with this man. And now Bruce for Brody in there grabbing Manning. No referee, as you hear Bill Mercer explain it. Fritz <laughs> like a surgeon, preparing to operate, drying off his hands. Gary Hart, the nervous patient. Gary Hart, this was the stipulation as set forth in the contract. Fritz von Erich gets Gary Hart inside the cage immediately following the match if Kabuki is the loser. You have seen Kabuki, the loser. You now see Fritz von Erich. Look at Fritz von Erich. Thousands of people here at Reunion Arena on the edge of their seats, on their feet. And now Gary Hart trying to do everything he can to stave off what could be one of the worst moments in his life. It certainly already is. Hart taking off his lemon tuxedo jacket, throwing it over the top out to the timekeeper. And now Bill Mercer throws it back in to Fritz. Fritz says, here, Gary, put this on. Let's do it right. Gary Hart now goes after Fritz von Erich. Hart in a tuxedo anticipating a celebration following the matches. Hart dressing up, wanting to look good at the party following. And I'm sure the old song, It's My Party and I'll Cry If I Want To, is exactly what Gary is thinking now as Fritz goes to work on that expensive tuxedo, trying to rip it off the back of Gary Hart. And now Fritz going after the tuxedo. He has ripped it up the back. He takes it around the head of Gary Hart. And Hart in deep, deep trouble. There is a cage surrounding these two men. I don't know how long Fritz von Erich has ached for this moment as he tosses the coat into the crowd. A big boot to the midsection and down goes Hart. And now, well, the coat is gone. And I think you can see what else is happening. Fritz von Erich, a punch to the face of Hart. And now Hart with a gouge out of desperation as Gary Hart's clothing being ripped off of him. Gary Hart now a rainbow of colors. And off of the trousers, and look at Hart. How can you help but look at Hart? Out go the trousers into the crowd. A couple of the thousands of fans on hand here tonight getting some souvenirs they didn't count on. And now the Iron Claw onto the head of Gary Hart. Hart trying desperately to kick out of it, but bigger men than Hart have tried to kick out of the Iron Claw to no avail. And you see Bill Mercer, or hear Bill Mercer outside, giving his own commentary, certainly worth listening to. And now the shirt ripped. Fritz von Erich obviously delighting in these few moments. The shirt comes off, at least part of the shirt. Gary Hart humiliated, beaten in the center of the ring. Pieces of the expensive shirt now being tossed out to the crowd. And now Fritz von Erich putting a piece of yellow, and I think there's some significance to that, on the back of Gary Hart. A yellow stripe, as it were, down the back of Gary Hart. Hart knocked down onto the canvas. And now the iron claw by Fritz von Erich, somewhat anticlimactic, I believe, as Gary Hart humiliated, beaten in the center of the ring. Not only is Hart beaten, his man tonight, Kabuki back in the dressing room soothing his wounds and Gary Hart all alone and now I believe they're going to ring the bell 
There it is. There is the bell as Gary Hart has been beaten by Fred. There's Kabuki. Kabuki comes in after Fritz von Erich Kabuki, who moments ago I thought was in the dressing room, has come into the ring. Kabuki working on Fritz von Erich, and now Gary Hart and Kabuki scrambling outside. But I would imagine that Fritz von Erich, even after that attack, still feeling the excitement of having a few moments alone in the cage with Gary Hart. And there is the scene as Gary Hart, humiliated, trying to lock the cage door. He and Kabuki going back to the dressing room. The winner, Fritz von Erich. A win, I'm sure, that Fritz von Erich will relish for a long, long time. At Reunion Arena, this is Wrestling Star Wars 81, and I'm Steve Harms.